the hello. Hey guys. Sorry I have two cameras set up tonight, so this is kind of fun. Exciting, a little crazy. I've never done that before, so I've got Instagram over here and Facebook over here. So welcome, I see you guys jumping on. Say hello when you get on. <laughs> hey guys. All right, so um, briefly, we're gonna be talking about knitting machines and I'm gonna tilt Instagram down a little. Lower you guys a little bit. Ooh. My stand's like, I don't go that direction. <laughs> Let's go this way. All right, so we're gonna be talking about knitting machines tonight. Um, I have two here that I'm gonna show you. They're the same brand, just a big one and a small one, and I'll demonstrate it a little bit, show you some stuff I've made, and answer any questions I can. Hey guys, hey, hey. Thanks for jumping on. I have some friends watching over on Facebook as well. I haven't done a Facebook Live in forever, um, so <laughs> hi guys. <laughs> I should do more. Um, I just haven't in a while. Oh, everybody's jumping on. Thanks for jumping on, guys. Okay, so we're going to talk real quick about knitting machines. One thing I'm going to have to kind of figure out here is, like, the Instagram video is, like, really close, at, like, zoomed in, and the Facebook one's, like, perfect. <laughs> it's, like, you can see everything where this was. So I may, may be moving some stuff around. But this is um, the knitting machine that I was using over the weekend. Um, so this is, it's called Centro. It's off Amazon. I am going to preface this whole video here real quick that, um, I'm not a professional knitter or crocheter or any of that. Um, haven't done any of that until I started using this machine. Um, I just learned how to use this like five days ago and my amazing friend Deborah, who <laughs> invited me over and I sat at her house and she taught me how to use this machine. And I caught on real quick. I absolutely loved it. And I made so many things. Did you saw that picture I posted earlier? Then you know, I, I did a lot. And that wasn't even all of them. I realized after I took that picture, like the hat I made for my son and the hat I made for Brett are not in that photo. <laughs> um, I think there's one more that's missing that's floating around. So anyways, I made a lot. Uh, real quickly, and that's what I liked about it, is, is I'm not one to just sit and do one thing for a long period of time. I like quick crafts, um, things that I can enjoy doing, and then finish it, complete it, and then move on to something else. Um, so I spent a couple of days doing this. I will say, uh, after cranking on this one for a few days, my shoulder, my arm were tired, but it, it was nice to be able to um, take a craft into the family room, sit on the couch, have this on like a little TV tray and quietly, you know, just crank out. Um, you'll see that this is not, it's not very loud. Uh, so what's nice is, you know, I can do this and still spend time with the family, but I'm not one to just sit still. So if I really want to have like watch a movie, I need to be doing something. I, I might. ADD, whatever. It is what it is. I, this is why I'm into crafts. Okay. So let me see real quick. Did you make anything for the pups? I have not made anything for the pups. However, I got this small mini version. So this big one is the 48 pin. So it's a big, this is one for making like hats and stuff. Okay. This little one is 22 pins and I got this one because I wanted to make smaller headbands like this. And these are so quick. I'm going to put it on real quick. I just curled my hair. I curled my hair for you guys. And I put on makeup at 8 o'clock at night. And I haven't worn makeup in days. So y'all better like, like and share this. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Alright, so look how cute this is. Can you guys see this on my screen? Okay, so that is more my speed, okay? I like the skinny, the skinny ones uh, because I can still wear my hair down with it. The bigger ones, the same... Same thing, but a bigger one. Uh, which way do I want to? Why, why do I struggle with putting these on? Okay, the bigger ones are super cute. And I think if I was like out in the snow, like this would make sense. And I had my hair pulled back, but it's too much underneath. But if my hair was pulled up, this would be like 
keeping my whole head warm. Okay, so that's kind of the difference between the headbands on the 48 pin versus the 22. See how much smaller that, like na more narrow it is. So this is like my quick grab and go for running errands, you know, in the winter. But I do like the big ones too. I told you guys I feel like I'm doing this. Woo! All right, and then let's show you a hat. I made a hat, some hats. Let's see, I know this one fits me. Look how cute these are. Look, and then it's it's a little extra here, and and that's just because I kept going. But um, you can fold this up more if you want, and pull it down tighter. I don't, I'm thinking I'm gonna put a palm on this one, and I have palms, and I didn't even get them out tonight. But I'll show you that in a second. Um, so I'm gonna have hat hair after I curl the doll. Uh, let's see here, so pretty, so cute. How did you connect that twist? I'm gonna show you how I did the twist. Pup hats, I need pup hats, don't I? I did put one of these on Biscuit and took a picture with her the other day and it was super cute. I posted that in my stories, I don't know if you guys saw that. Whew, now I got crazy, crazy hat hair. <laughs> yeah, I know what you were saying. How did you connect that twisted? Okay, it's all about how you finish it off. So there's so many different ways to do hats, to do headbands. I've seen the twisted ones. This is how I learned from my friend Debra. Um, but I've seen ones where they're not twisted. They're just like conjoined at the middle and they're like scrunched, kind of like the top of the hat. Um, so that's really cute too, but I really like the twisted. Um, it's actually all one piece and it's brought together here. It's all about how it's sewn together here. Um, and sewn, I mean like by hand. So this is really an easy project. Like I said, I was not a crocheter or knitter before any of this. So what is it giving me a... All right, anyways. Um, so let's, let's do something. I'm going to show you stuff on the small one because otherwise it'll take too long to do a, a full hat doesn't take that long but that can get kind of boring it doesn't take long to do the little headband and you guys want to learn the twist we'll do a hat another day but real quick if you get this machine and by the way I'm not sponsored by these people I just this is just the one that I happen to get it's a pretty popular one and it's gonna run you anywhere between 50 to 70 dollars on Amazon roughly um, this is not an expensive model it will more than likely break at some point but it does come with suction cups, if you didn't hear that. <laughs> it does come with suction cups, which is really handy um, for the big one. It helps hold it down to your surface, because when you get to crank it on this thing, it will want to move, okay? Um, it comes with some sample yarn. This is, let me tell you what I did when I got this machine and I got these sample yarns. <laughs> Don't laugh at me, but this is how you learn, guys. I literally <laughs> knitted this whole thing. There was four different colors in my box. Um, and I just like, didn't know what I was doing. I watched like a quick video because all of the instructions are for the most part in Chinese. And, um, I was like, well, I'm just going to figure this out. It really can't be that hard. Like I see people doing this all the time. Um, it comes with like some two thicker yarns and two thinner yarns and it teaches you kind of like how they stitch on the different tension settings, all of that kind of fun stuff, okay? So I literally just, because it was included and it's not like the softest yarn, not as soft as like my really nice ones. So I was not about to like put this on my head. It's kind of itchy. So this is a great chance to like play around with it and get used to it and figure it out. That's what that sample yarn is for. Um, but it comes, this big one comes with this little doohickey right here. Can you guys see that? This is your tension guide. So this is the front of the machine that would actually be facing you like, like this. Okay. And the hand wheel is going to be on your right hand side. Sorry for the, the people who are left handed, but it is on the right. And then on the other side here is a counter and this counts how m every single time you go around, it counts and adds a row. Okay. Now let me tell you, these are not expensive. They are plastic. They're decently made, but they are not proof and they're not always going to be perfect so the first one I got 
started to freak out and have issues with the gears and the counter never worked. I kind of expected for the counter to not work. I actually ordered an electronic counter that you can attach to any um, knitting machine because then it's more accurate. And I say that because if you're going to like look at patterns online for different things to make, um, different types of hats or even like sweaters or whatever, you can do all sorts of stuff on these. Um, you need to know how many rows you're, you're going, especially if you want to be consistent in your sizing. Um, with that being said, this one was not, or the previous one I had was not counting my rows consistently. Sometimes it was, sometimes I do every other one and sometimes it wouldn't count at all. Um, and I did like a hundred rows and it only counted to 14. So it's just not, it is what it is. There is a brand of knitting machines out there that is expensive, but I think it, this is a good starter to see if this is something you would like. That's why I got it because I was like, I don't know if I'm even going to like this. I've never done anything like this before, but it's always intrigued me. I really like doing this. I think if I was going to make a business out of making hats and selling them and all of that, then I would invest in the nice one. That's the one that my friend Deborah has. That's what she does. And it's really nice. And she doesn't have issues with hers, but you get what you pay for. Okay. That's all I'm trying to say. Um, <laughs> So this is my second one of these, which is fine. Um, I just returned the other one. The other thing you're going to see on the front here, and I didn't know what this was. This is a T and a P. This is for doing a panel or a tube. And for hats and these things that we're going to be doing, and most of what you're going to do is going to be on a tube. If you set it to tube, it's going to go all the way around. If you set it to panel, it's only going to go back and forth one side and be flat. It's not going to be a tube all the way around. Does that make sense? Okay. I'm going to actually set this one aside for right now, but if you have questions about it, you want to see it, let me know. This little guy is the same brand. You going to come in? He's acting like a walrus. Not like that. <laughs> Not like that. You're such a goober. He had straws in his mouth looking like a walrus. The puppies are excited to see you. Brett's here, by the way. Hello, everyone. He says hello. Okay. So this is the little one. I'm going to show you how to do stuff on this one tonight. This one has 22 pins. This one does not come with suction cups, but it has these little felt uh, pads. Dre says hi, by the way. Hi, Dre. <laughs> yeah, they're going, they're getting a little excited. She's like, no, I'm here to craft. I wait here out a little. It just comes in, stirs everything out, up, and then leaves. All right, so the little one's 22 pins. This is good for smaller things. You can actually make socks on this, which I kind of want to try, but I don't know if I could wear them. They'd be too hot. Um, but we're gonna sh I'm going to show you how to use this one. There's a lot of similarities in the fact that it does have a tube and a panel setting. It has the same tension guide. It does not have a uh, row counter. Uh, it looks like an ice cream maker. I wish it made ice cream. That'd be so much more fun. Uh, we're making knitted things and hats. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to use this one real quick. Uh, but first I'll show you some of the hats I've made. So I showed you the red one that I put on and I like them when they fold up. Lee, so this, yes, we're doing a knitting machine. This is a pretty purple one. I love this pink one. This is like a fuchsia pink. It kind of shows up really bright on Instagram. Um, so we've got that one. I have a gray one. This is very similar to the one that I made for Brett. I just made another one because I really liked this gray. And then the one I made for my son is navy on top. And then this part that flips up right here is gray. And that's what he picked out and he challenged me with changing colors. And I did it. I figured it out. Um, then I have this pretty hunter green headband. I have a teal headband. Rainbow headband and a skinny rainbow headband. And then this was the first rainbow headband I made. Now look at how gnarly this sucker is. Can you guys see that? It looks so nice on this side. And this side's like, oh, like what I like to call jankity. And what you can see right here is when I realized the tension was off for this, th this yarn. I keep wanting to say thread because I sew this yarn um, because this was a thinner yarn than some of the other stuff I had been working with. And so it needed to be in a tighter tension setting for it to actually stitch really nicely. Otherwise it was like getting all bumpy and loopy. And 
So this one was just a mistake, but I didn't realize it until I was like halfway through and I was like, well, I'm committed now. Um, so I finished it off and it was just a oopsie. But I saved it because those are examples that you learn from, right? But let's make one of these, okay? Uh, let me check. It's cute, right? Like, it's still cute. I, I think if you have it on and it's pulled tight, you really wouldn't even notice. But me being me, I definitely noticed. Um, so a couple other things that come with your knitting machine is these cheapo plastic knitting needles and a cheapo plastic uh, crochet hook. Um, I am going to not be using those. I learned from my dear friend Deb that I needed a knitting needle like this that has the little hook on the end. I wanna show both of you guys here. Can you see that it, it bends right here? Okay, so I'm gonna use this little guy and I'm gonna use a a nicer crochet hook that actually works well okay so you may have to change the size of your hook or needle depending on the size of your yarn but these machines can really they they're good with like a, a size 3 or size 4 yarn they won't do anything bigger than that trust me I think that's kind of how I messed up my first one, my other one okay so to do one of these little tubes we're gonna get going We've shown all the things, and when we get started, I'll tilt it down so you guys can really see what I'm doing. And again, I'm not a professional. I'm more than likely going to screw up at some point, but we'll, we'll just cross that bridge when we get to it. Okay? All right. I'm going to sit. I'm going to sit. It's been a day. No more questions? I'm going to tilt you guys down, so if you have questions and I don't, like, see them, I'm sorry. Just like throw a bunch of hearts or something and I'll try to look. All right. So this is it. Let me fix Facebook over here. Facebook, you guys need to get zoom in. Get on in here. All right, there we go. Sorry, I have to it. Okay, we're gonna leave it alone. Um, so this is what it's gonna look like when it's facing you. So it's gonna be one different color pin than all the other ones. See how all the other ones are white and then I've got my black one. That's my starting pin. It is different on this machine than the big one. The big one, the starting pin is white and all the other ones are the same color as the rest of these things. So um, just a little different. But we're going to start with this one. In order to make one of these, there's a couple of ways that people do the hats and the, and the bands, the headbands. Um, the way that I was taught is the way I'm going to show you, and that's with using waste yarn. So you're not going to start with the yarn that you want it to look like. You're going to start with uh, a yarn that's like a different color. So I'm actually going to make one out of this teal because I really want one. I loved this one, but I really want a small one in it. So I'm going to make one out of this teal. But before I start with the teal, I'm going to need to use some waste yarn. This is just regular yarn. Um, I'm going to use this one because it's a contrasting color. If I was going to do one in the rainbow, I would probably go with like a black or completely different, like not white, because some of these are so light that when you're trying to tell your stitches apart at the end to finish it off, it's hard to see which one's which. So definitely use a, a very opposing color. So we're going to start with the white. And I'm going to turn this around so I can see what I'm doing. But I'll show you as I go. Um, I'll try to get through this pretty quickly. This is one I wish you could like, you know, like people like do the speed up. I wish I could do that in real life. Now we get so much more done. <laughs> A stardew pen? Starting pen. Sorry, I talk really fast, Patsy. I'm from the South and I talk really fast with the twang. And I'm always having to translate for Brett. <laughs> we were we were at lunch yesterday and the guy brought us our food at the barbecue place. And he sits it down and he told Brett something. And I said, oh, thanks. You know, it was really nice. And he walks off and Brett looks at me and he goes, what did he say about my food? And I said, he said he gave you an extra piece of cornbread because the one that he originally put on your plate was cut kind of small so we gave you two pieces and he was like I didn't get any of that other than the word cornbread and it's just 
it, it, I just, I don't know. I'm from here. So I just, it, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's, let's dive in. All right. So you're going to start out with a little bit of a, um, extra slack here and to get it going, you're going to slowly go around starting at your start pin and hook it underneath. Okay. And you're going to go outside, inside, outside, inside, making sure it caught on that first one. It did outside, inside. You get it. I don't need to keep saying it. Do I, I kind of wish this one had a suction cup. Oh yeah, that's right. Outside, inside. Maybe I need to say it for myself. Outside, inside. <laughs> ah, I swear. I know what I'm doing, I think. You have to kind of keep it taut. It's kind of... This one's got these little bumper things and it makes it a little hard to get it going. Okay. Outside, inside, outside. And then we're back to our starting pin. So we're going to put it on the inside. There's this little guide right here that it feeds through and holds the yarn in place. It kind of clicks into place. And then on this tension guide, I'm going to set it to the outside one right here. If I can do that. There we go. So this outside one is like the loosest setting. Um, when we get going or when I did the rainbow, remember how I showed you it didn't knit too well and then it started knitting better because I adjusted the tension. It's because I had it in this loose setting and then I moved it to the middle section and it started because it's a thinner yarn. This is a good yarn for this looser setting. Um, I also tug on like hold it so that provides some tension as well. So now we're going to just crank this and we're going to make sure we're going to go slow. It's the first time, you know, around completely. And we're going to hear those gears. We'll make sure they all go underneath the hook. And once they've all gone up through, pick it up a little bit. We're going to go around like five times or so. All right. We want to make sure as we're going around that we're not missing any stitches, skipping stitches. We want to make sure it's doing exactly what we want it to do. All right. I think I'm going to stop here. Well, no, I'm going to go all around. If you miss your start pin, you just got to keep going. You can't go backwards once you start. Okay. Do not go backwards. Um, not in tube setting. I forget how quick it is to go around this one. I'm used to doing the bigger one more. Okay. So we're at the starting point here with this. We've done, I know, five or six rows. Um, at this point, I'm going to grab my scissors. I'm just going to cut a tail pull it out of the tension, pull it out of the holder and drop it onto the inside, making sure it's going under that hook right here. We're going to set this aside. And we're going to get the yarn out that we're actually going to be knitting with. You want to make sure that you're pulling the yarn from the inside of your skein here. It needs to come from the inside. Don't pull from the outside. Okay. I learned that the other day. Um, I'm also going to show you something I learned. Let me grab an, oh, here's one. This is a brand new thing. It's not brand new. I did use it to make one, um, but it didn't look like this. It was all stuffed in there, but you want to reach. It's like, this is what I compared it to the other day and they laughed at me. You want to reach in there and pull out this little wad. Okay. Sometimes it's small, sometimes it's big, but it's like a wad of yarn in the middle. I'm going to pull that out and untangle it and find your end. That's the end that you want to start with. And your yarn will pull from the inside. And as you keep going, this will go and get flat and deflated like a balloon. That's how you're going to prevent it from getting tangled. Okay. Don't pull from the outside, pull from the inside. It's like pulling the giblets out of a turkey. That's exactly what I thought of. I had a mild moment of PTSD when I thought of that. And then we got back to knitting <laughs> because I really don't like doing that part. <laughs> But, uh, when I was done with that one, I just kind of stuck it back in there. All right. When I was little, I had one of the homemade ones that was made of wood and nails. It took forever. This is so much faster. Yes. Cause you were having, it didn't have a crank. I'm sure. Emma, it probably just like, you had to just keep going and then knitting it as you went. 
Um, they do make those now, um, the rounds with the pens and they're like plastic and you can do the same process, but you're doing all the knitting and this does it for you. All right, let's, <laughs> let's start this one. So I'm going to have a tail here and you probably want at least six inches or so. And I'm going to go, so I dropped my, um, waste yarn, this white to the left of this pin here. So this one's going to come to the right of the pin. So they kind of overlap. I'm going to drop it right back into that. And I'm going to hold these two in the middle just to make sure that it catches and it does. And we're going to take our time and this is how you join two colors. Okay. Now, if we wanted it to be white on the end and we wanted to have two different colors, you know, whatever, we would actually go around a couple of times, two or three times. And then I like to do it when I'm opposite of it because then I could see it. Then we would tie these two together and then they would become one. And that's how you could get like rainbow color. That's what I did with my son's hat that I said I did two tone. Um, but for when you're doing waste yarn, this white yarn is not going to end up on our finished product. We don't want to tie it on because we want to be able to pull it off um, easily. Okay, so we don't want that. And then at this point, we're just cranking away. I will say you don't really want a lot of, you want to pull it out of your yarn. You don't want a lot of tension. Hey guys, thanks for jumping on. Got friends watching on Instagram and on Facebook. And if you want to watch this back later, I'm going to try to save it off of Facebook, download it off of Facebook and post it to YouTube. So it'll always be on my YouTube channel. So if you're not following me on YouTube, go follow or subscribe, whatever they call it on YouTube. That would be amazing. I'm really trying to grow that channel. It's absolutely amazing. It absolutely blows my mind that someone thought that machine up in their heads. Crazy. I know, right? Um, but I'm so glad they did because this makes me enjoy knitting and I don't know that I ever would have otherwise. Um, all right. This little one doesn't have a suction cup, so I kind of have to hold it down. But while I'm holding it, I don't, you guys can't see, I'm also holding the yarn and keeping that tension. Once you get going, it's like, Smooth like butter. I wish I could play some music, but if I did, Facebook would be like, you don't own the rights and we silenced your whole video and they can't hear you talk. Because I usually like, I'm watching true crime. I love, I love, I'm hooked on Criminal Minds right now. I went back through the first 12 seasons are on Netflix. The last three seasons are on Hulu. I am on the last season and yes, there's 15 seasons and it is now called Creamy Minds is what I call it, Creamy Minds and it's always playing in the background. Um, I will not mention how quickly I got through all of it. You see, how much, you see how fast this is like adding up? That's why I wanted to show you on the small one because it does go a lot faster because it's only 22 pins and not the big one has 48 pins. So. Oh, I wish I'm going to have to figure out a way to like stabilize this. Um, to my table, I tried to sit it in my lap last night and then like put my legs here, but then I couldn't turn it. There's not enough space here. I tried. I've tried all the things. It just, I need a way to be able to hold the yarn for the guide, but it's not going to do that tonight. All right. So it's just going and going. All right. Oh, and so I also have a TikTok, by the way, and I'm going to be posting a really funny video of Brett on my TikTok later um, after this live because I forgot to do it before. And if you want to see that, go follow Craft with Bethany on TikTok. It's another channel I'm really trying to grow. It's a really good uh, platform for crafting tutorials and stuff. So. I could probably find a way to attach some sort of suction cup or something. Uh, Patsy, I'm for sure. Look, I skipped a stitch right here already. It missed one. You see that? You see that little bump? It 
It is what it is. Now, at this point, I'm not that far along, so I could totally just take it off and unwind the whole thing and reuse the yarn. Um, but for a life, we're not going to. We're just going to keep going. A few little boo-boos won't hurt. Come on now. Told you. It's going to act up because we're doing this live. If I was sitting here watching, like, the new Marvel movie like I was yesterday while I was doing this, it would not be doing this. Look at that. They're trying to not go underneath there. Bad, bad. I need to be paying attention to it instead of looking at you guys. Uh, hey guys. All right, so for those who are just joining us, we are using the Centro Mini Knitting Machine. This is 22 pins. They also make one that's bigger with 48 pins, but there's no way we would finish a whole hat in a decent, like appropriate amount of time. Um, I mean, they really don't take that long, but I'm just saying. It would have been smarter. It's smarter for me to do it from this machine because it's so much faster. Let me know if you guys have any questions about anything that I'm doing. We're going to be making a little mini headband with a twist. I'll set it right here so you guys can see it. Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see it? Oh, whatever. <laughs> Something like that. You can see it on Facebook, but not on Instagram. The bigger one is for hats and making like the really wide headbands um, and for making hats. Um, but I'm going to show you how to make a skinny headband that you can wear with your hair down. For us ladies, we want to have show our hair. Now, on YouTube, there's a ton of videos and different ways to do exactly what I'm doing. I'm just showing you the way that I learned. I found it really easy, okay? All right, so I'm going to reach down in here and show you how much we've done already. Look at this. We got a couple we got a couple spots where I wasn't paying attention and we missed some stitches and that was my fault um, when it starts to hit the table you actually want to pull it up and twist it into itself and that way it stays in the middle and the reason is is that weight is gonna continue to pull it down otherwise it's gonna build up and push it up and that's how you're gonna end up with more skip stitches so you want that tension in the middle too I will be posting the live on my Instagram It'll be on my IGTV. I'm also streaming right now from Facebook. And on Facebook, you can download the full video, hopefully. And I'll post it on my YouTube channel. So we'll do a little recording of it on there, too, for um, safekeeping. And it'll be easier to find in the future uh, if you decide to get one of these. I like this little one. I think you can, like, make socks and gloves and all sorts of stuff. I have literally just learned how to do this five days ago, so I'm not a professional. I'm just showing you how to make the two things I know how to make. And then I got to doing this one. I was like, I want to make smaller ones. So I immediately bought this one. Uh, and it came, you know, prime day, two days later. I think it was even like the next day I had it. Um, and here we go. So yes, I will post the live. I will save it. So you can go back and watch what you miss. Uh, we got it started using waste yarn, which we will be using waste yarn on the end as well for this. On hats, um, I do not use waste yarn to start it, but I do use waste yarn to end it because it has two different ends that finish, you know, like for here. Um, so I'll show you how to do that on another video. Jason wants one. Actually, I've had several people already ask me, like, are you going to be selling these? I don't know. I'm just making them for fun, guys. Like, there's only three people in my family. And I've got enough hats to last. Like, to... I don't know. For an army, almost. Definitely for, like, a baseball team. <laughs> Alright. Started to touch the table and get long again, so I'm just going to keep twisting it up. Looks like a little donut. Oh, 
Now, there are fun attachments that you can get that do not come with this. Sorry, I feel like that. <laughs> I just saw me. Woo! Sorry, I'm crazy. I have an Amazon affiliate link. This is linked in my Amazon store. <laughs> Uh, it is there. So if you go to Instagram and you go to my link tree in my bio, it's there. Um, so the little one, I need to add the little one. So wait till I get off and I'll add those. Um, this little, wow, this little gadget right here actually fits the, oh, it fits both of these actually. So it attaches to the handle. This is not a drill. This is an electric screwdriver. There is a big difference. Do not use this with a drill. It's too powerful. It'll break your machine. Um, use it with an electric and it will attach like so. Okay. But because it's loud, a little loud and noisy, I didn't want to use it on here, but you can get those. It's not necessarily um, Highly recommend it, especially for some of these cheaper ones, because it can mess with the gears, and I think that's what happened to my other one. My first big one. This one's so quick and easy, I don't really need to use it on this. But I'm not joking, after two straight days of knitting on that big one, my shoulder from doing this motion was dead. Like, it hurt so bad yesterday. I thought I slipped on it wrong, and then I was like, wait a second, what have I been doing for the last 48 hours? Oh, yeah. But giving that arm more exercise than it's had in the last two years. So. <laughs> All right, let's see how long we are now, because we don't want to get it too long. Oh, snap. Okay, so this is probably good. Probably a little long, but that's okay. We're going to fold it back into the middle real quick like so. I'm going to get my scissors and you want a pretty decent tail. And I'm going to put that in the middle just like we did before when we went from waist yarn to the teal. We're going to go from teal back to waist yarn. See how flat my, look how flat it got because you pull from the middle. Um, so now we're going to take our white again. Almost done guys. And we're going to put it on just like we did the last one. Crisscross applesauce with our color and our white. So the color's going that way and the white's going this way. And I'm going to hold both. And we're going to go slow. Make sure it all connects the first time around. And then we can go a little faster. We're going to do like another five or six rows. Hey girl, uh, what are we making? We're, I am just demonstrating the knitting machine and I'm using the mini one. This is 22 pins, but there is a big 48 pin knitting machine that counts your rows. Um, but we're doing something quick and we're making a twisted knitted headband. I think we're good. Back to my starting point. I'm gonna trim this. And this is my favorite part. Okay, you ready? This is how this is why you do waist yarn, okay? Alright, so you're gonna take it off of here, slide it back into the middle and hold it so it goes down into that catch. And now we're not knitting anything on here. We're just gonna go all the way around. This is going to drop our pins. And then once we get back to the starting point, now it's going to fall off and you're just going to watch it all come off. Just like that. And this is the easiest way to get it off the machine. Sometimes the last one wants to stick and we just pull it and it's done. And we... There. Looks like a sock. Can we set that aside? How easy is that? If you don't do the waist yarn and you get to your last stitch and you're done and you need to get it off, you're going to have to take your needle and literally get it off on the, and it's hard to do on the machine. This is easy. Okay. Um, there's a right side and a wrong side. This is the wrong side of your knitting. 
now it's inside out. This is the right side where it looks like cables, cable knitting. This is like a sleeve. The other one is huge, so it's 48 pins. It is meant for making hats. So fun. Hats. Or really big headbands, like the wide ones, okay? But I really wanted some skinny headbands, so I got the smaller one, and I made one, and I fell in love with it. And I just figured it went so quickly, I would just show that on a live tonight. Oh, thanks. You like my shirt? I got this Soul Happy Boutique, and they have become my new favorite shopping spot. Because they have an app to shop from, and it's so easy, and they're so, so cute. Anyways. Alright, so we are going to... This is where... Um, a little crocheting comes in because we need to close up both ends completely okay so finishing off a headband is going to be different than a hat so I'm going to show you the headband tonight it's a little more involved than that than the hats but this is really easy so you see you have your two inside threads here the white and the teal you want to kind of pull and see where the opposite side of that is it's right here at this stitch and this is where your crochet hook comes in, okay? And we're gonna start at, I'm gonna turn this around because I'm right handed. We're gonna start at this stitch, we're gonna hook it, and then we're gonna hook the one next to it on the right side, and then we're gonna come around, loop it through, and then we're gonna hook the one closest to me and loop it through. And then we're gonna hook the opposite one and loop it through. When you first get started, there's not as much slack, so it's a little tighter. We'll do the one closest to me and we'll get through And you'll see, we're just going back and forth and we're doing, this is why you need an opposing color uh, yarn for your waist yarn because otherwise it would be really hard to tell which one was the top stitch. See, these are all the top stitches all the way around. We're just doing the very, this is how you're finishing it off, okay? Um, and you're gonna pull it through. And I know you guys probably can't see this super close. It's kind of hard to show you, but let me see if I can get a little closer. This part actually quickly became my favorite part. Until this one stitch. Okay, there we go. And the reason you want to do five or six rows of the waist yarn is you're not finishing it off, but you do need it to hold its structure until you get done with this. And it kind of came off right here, so that's why it's giving me a hard time. You do not want to skip any of these top stitches in the, in the color you're doing, or else it's not going to secure your, product, your finished headband. We're almost done with this side. Okay, come on now. It's because I'm doing it, I'm not hold. it's easier for me to hold it close to me. <laughs> and I'm doing it in a weird way, in a weird angle. All right. All right, and to finish it off, oh, I did miss one. I'm just gonna come over here and grab it real quick. So easy to do, especially at the end. All right, there. And to finish it off, you're gonna take the teal, your color, and you're gonna loop it around and pull it through and tighten it. So you see how it's stitched into a straight line across here? Now this end is closed off and I can remove this and watch look how easy this is just unwinds all the way around you just tug it and all this waist yarn comes right off I save it and I use it on my next project sometimes it gets tied into this little knot and you just have to kind of pull it out there we go so there we got one end sealed up. Now we're going to do 
the other end of my missed stitch here. Looks lovely. I could honestly take a little piece of this yarn and probably just tie a little knot in there and it'll be on the inside. Let's see if I can fix this real quick. Let's see if y'all have any questions. Yeah, yeah, you just kind of jumped on at the end of my live, but that's okay. It's going to be on my IGTV and I'm going to put it on to, it'll be on my YouTube and my Facebook, so. I'm totally doing like a sewing trick here, but that's just me. I've never tried this before, so we're going to see if it works. I just don't want it to come undone when it stretches and I to put it on, you know? Okay. I was like, what is inside there? It's my extra strings. So now I can see where I'm skipped a stitch. Yeah, that's not gonna work. All right, well, it was worth a shot. Okay, let's close up this other side. <laughs> if it doesn't look good, it doesn't look good, but I just ultimately wanna show you guys how to do it. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing. Find my opposite end, my opposite stitch, it's this one, roughly close enough. And we're gonna do the same process that I showed you on the other side. And we're gonna close it up real quick. And I'm gonna do this kind of close to me because I wanna knock it out. All right, so let me know um, what you guys think of this whole like knitting machine. I know there's like a little controversy, they're like, this takes all of the talent out of it. And while I can understand that viewpoint from knitters and crocheters, um, I feel like this is introducing that craft to a lot of people who probably wouldn't have even picked up a knitting needles or a crochet hook otherwise. Uh, I'm talking about people like me. Um, so, it's introduced me to it. It doesn't mean that I won't learn how to do it without the machine. It's just piqued my interest to make me feel like I actually could do this. So, um, and there is some knitting and crocheting involved to finish these up, but it's not a lot. And it's a good introduction to this type of craft. I always like to try new things and this is the latest. The latest and the greatest. I will say at the end of these, it's a little tight. Almost done. Here we go. And Last little loop with the teal. And it's stitched up. Now, uh, this side is not gonna pull off like the other side because, um, it's our ending point, so the loose one is already attached to it. So in order to get, so you, you get to keep one end of the waist yarn and reuse it. This end you are gonna have to cut off. Just don't cut, <laughs> don't cut your, my teal or the color that you're doing. Um, that would be bad. And then once we get this off, I will show you how to do the twist. That's the next part, and then it's done. And that's like it. We've done this so quickly. How do you know how long to make it? Did you follow a pattern? I did not follow a pattern for this. 
Um, and a lot of patterns are gonna tell you how many rows. So if you're doing like hats, it's gonna tell you like how many rows you need for an adult hat, like a women's hat, a men's hat, a kid's hat, all of those kind of things, right? Um, my counter on my big one doesn't always work. So I've ordered like a really nice counter that attaches to a knitting machine so it can actually keep count. So I just kind of like measured it because sometimes you can kind of find out like how long the tube needs to be. But honestly, it's just trial and, trial and error. Um, and everybody's head's a little different too. Like I have a lot of hair, I have a lot. So if I'm trying to put a hat on, I need to be able to like cover up my head and my hair. <laughs> Um, my next challenge that I was talking to my friend Deborah about was wanting to make hats that have the hole at the top for your ponytail. That's my next challenge is to figure out how to do those because she's made me some of those by hand when she crochets them. Um, but she's not sure how to do it with the knitting machine and we're going to try to figure that out because those are some of my favorite hats to be able to just uh, put my hair in a pony or a bun and then stick it through the top of the hat. It's so nice. Okay. So this is all trash. Into the trash can. Alright, so this end looks a little janky. It's because I wasn't paying attention when I first started and uh, it got away from me and I have a skip stitch. But this is how it should look. All nice and pretty. Um, so you're going to take one end and with the string on my right side, your left side, I'm going to fold it and then I'm going to bring this end up. Oh, wait, I'm going to fold it. <laughs> Sorry. This part always plays tricks with my head and I'm going to bring my ends up and I'm going to fold this side in half and then bring this end up and then fold this end into the middle. I'm making like a sandwich. It's like like horseshoes that go together, okay? Um, so it's gonna kind of be weirdly twisted and you're gonna have a string that's on this side and a string that's on this side. You're gonna start with the string on the right corner, okay? So can you guys see how it's like this and this and then it's this and this? They're folded together, okay? Um, and then you're gonna take that little red needle that I had earlier We're going to thread this first one, the one on the outside. And we're not going to go over, we're going to go through and through and through. We're not going to go over the top, okay? And you're going to start at the edge and you're just going to put it all the way through and pull tight. You want to make sure as you go back and forth that you catch all of them so they don't... I just unthreaded mine. You don't. Okay. Where was I? Um, but you want to make sure you catch all of, of your ends. This is why you want to leave long tails in the, this, you know, the color that you're finishing it off with. So you can finish off your headband. I'm gonna go all the way to the edges and poke it through. And then I like to come, so this one's kind of like more in the middle, so I kind of like to come back to the middle where that one is. So they're closer together. All right, so now I've taken my needle off and I've got my two strings. I've knitted back and forth. We're just gonna tie a couple of knots and we're done. We're done. How easy was that? And then I'll show you how it looks twisted. There we go. Trim my threads. Just like that. And you're just gonna turn it right side up. And when you do that, it is perfectly twisted. 
Voila. It looks a little funky right here, so just ignore that part. Yep. It's twisted. There we go. That's the right way. All right, so there you go. And I'll put it on. I think this one's gonna fit really well. The other one's a little loose. I'm gonna get it over my glasses here. Hey, Sally. Thanks for tuning in. We put these up so you guys can see. There we go. I got my twist twisted. There we go. I had a couple missed stitches, so this one's kind of a dud. But this is why I like the skinny headbands, because I can cover my ears, um, but still have my hair down. Like this one. So that's what we made tonight. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, thanks for the hearts, guys. Pushing my glasses down. Whoa! That's some crazy curls. Hey, Brett. Coming. <laughs> he said he's coming. Look at that. We finished it. Except for these crazy curls. What do you think? Oh, I like it. You like it? I heard you still talking. I made you a little. I just, that's exactly what I have. Well, <laughs> we know what she likes. Shirley Temples. <laughs> I like your headband. It looks really nice. Thank you. I like the, the size too. Hey, here we just get. Please. Please, kind sir. Where's your hat? In my car. Oh. Ooh, ooh. Ooh. All right, Biscuit, you want to try one on? Come here. Say, show them. Show them. Oh, that's. He's so pretty. Vicky, that's so nice. Snap. Vicky. With the cap. Does he have a treat? I like him yet. Y'all, I'm just... You gotta keep your ears warm, Bix. Her name's Biscuit, by the way, but we call her Vicky. <laughs> she looks like an old lady. <laughs> she will do anything for a treat. Like, wear these ridiculous headbands that don't fit her. <gasps> oh. like, Give me that treat! Give me that treat! <laughs> oh, well. That fell off. Well, you can eat your treat on the floor. Hey, come put one of these hats on and show them how nice it looks on you. The rainbow one? Just kidding. Um, no, come over here. Put this gray one on. So we're summer kind of girly. Scooch on in! For those who don't know, this is Brett. Hi, everyone. This is Instagram and Facebook. I do not have Facebook. No. That was oh. kind of small on you. I don't know, that oh. looks nice. I didn't have it back too far. But that one fits snug on you. Mm -hmm. With the flip up. He put one on in the house the other day and he was like, I gotta get this off, it's so hot. I know, I'm instantly warm already. <laughs> it's warm in here. I right know. But it looks nice. I like it. Do y'all like it? Mm -hmm. I like it, you like it? No, where are the comments? <laughs> Brett looks phenomenal. <laughs> Good looking Brett. Hot stuff, Brett. No, I'm just kidding. You're making stuff up. Yeah, no one said that. I would say that though. <laughs> Dre says hi. Yes. Hey. Hey, Dubs. <laughs> Very nice. Thank Very you, nice. Dubs. All right. Well, I hope you guys like this little tutorial. I think I will record a tutorial on doing a big hat because those take a little longer than these little headbands. But I wanted to show you the process and how easy they are. <laughs> oh my gosh, no. You look like, like a gypsy. <laughs> Brett? exactly what I was going for. <laughs> That's too funny. <laughs> Brett and the rainbow or I will riot. Da <laughs> Dobbs is throwing you throwing it out. Put the rainbow one on. That is your color. Too bad he can't see these colors. I know. Being colorblind. Blue so and green. Like, like, hold on. There oh, you there go. There we go. <laughs> okay. It makes your cheeks look rosy. Well, it's 500 degrees in here. <laughs> it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's warm. Yes, fantastic. Yes. These are just really warm too. They are because they're they're <clears throat> double the thickness. See, they're. Come here, Gussie. Oh, are you gonna put one on Gus? <laughs> he looks like a little hipster dog. Hi, yeah. Gus. Come here and show everybody. <gasps> Want the cheat? The cheat? I don't have one, but look how cute you look. <laughs> He's awesome. 
He's such a good doggy. They just got groomed yesterday, so they look so nice. All right, guys. Well, thanks for tuning in. Like I said, I'm going to save this. This will be on my IGTV. You should also be able to find it on my Facebook later. And then I'll download it to my YouTube channel. If you're not following me on YouTube um, or TikTok, please go do so. It would mean the world to me. Those are my two channels I'm really trying to grow this year um, to reach more people with my crafting. Um, and I wanted to quickly point out these beautiful roses. Look. I'll bring them closer. Brett got these for me just because today. And my favorite tea. Oh, it was such a nice surprise at the end of the day. The end of the work day. And then, if you don't know, I make dog bandanas. Biscuit Bell Boutique on Facebook and Instagram. BiscuitBellBoutique.com um, I still have a few Valentine's bandanas left. And they're reversible. And they snap on. So go grab them. I was packing up orders earlier tonight before the live, and I need to go finish that now. Um, but if you are looking for a little bandana for your pup, I have some ready to go. All right, guys. This is hot. Oh, and it stuck to my earrings. All right, well, I will get that out later. I'm coming. I got it. I got it. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, have a good one. Thank you guys for jumping on tonight. And if you have any other questions about the knitting machines, just ask. If I don't know the answer, I will find out for you. But there are a lot of other videos of people who have used them more than I have on YouTube. Um, and the ones that I'm using, I will link in my Amazon store, which is in my bio on Instagram. All right. Bye, guys.